Here's what's coming up on episode 53 of the Big Seance Podcast. Dina DiCastro. So when people think of astrology, they often think of it in that limited form of uh, the column in the newspaper that tells you, okay, if you're a cancer, you're going to meet a guy... Uh, down on the corner today that's going to give you a hundred bucks, you know, and it's that fortune telling aspect of astrology that has given all of astrology kind of a bad name. And I really want to empower people to think about it as, you know, a way to make better choices for their own highest good. Where you have felt rather invisible now you're able to start getting seen and recognized for your work. Does that make sense and resonate with you? Yes, it does. It does. Good. Yeah. Okay. And if other people tell you you're crazy, then you're probably going in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, because it feels like good news. And, you know, even though there's challenges ahead, they're, they're for the greater good. You know, these, these are great changes, and um, I guess I've been running on faith for some time now, for a few months, and so this is, uh, I think, the universe's way of telling me that you're going to be okay. Welcome to the Big Seance Podcast. I'm Patrick Keller of BigSeance.com, and this is a place for an open discussion on all things paranormal, but specifically topics like ghosts and hauntings, paranormal research, spirit communication, psychics and mediums, and life after death. So basically, anything that pops up in my paranormal world. The candles are already lit, so you might as well come on in and join the seance. Dearest Paranerds, I have a treat for you today. This show is just over a year and a half old, and there's a topic that so far we haven't approached yet. That topic is astrology. And maybe the reason I haven't approached it is because I don't really have a lot of knowledge about astrology much of what I've written about or talked about over the years has revolved around topics that I read about. And I haven't read much about astrology. <laughs> well, recently on my own, I just decided that it was time and we needed to go there. And that brings us to someone who just walked into the parlor. I want you to meet Dina DiCastro. She has a fascinating about page at her website, and so you may want to check this out later, but I'll give you some quick highlights. She's a professional astrologer and spiritual mentor, and her passion is helping you connect to the divine within you. Her connection with astrology goes all the way back to her childhood. She has an MA in English and taught the subject at the college level for several years, but she also has an MA that focuses on spiritual traditions, which later led her to getting a two-year certificate in spiritual direction from the Urban Spirituality Center in Portland. She's done lots of work with dreams. She's written on the subject of divination and also spoke on that topic at Stanford University in 2008. You can find her podcast on iTunes, which is great. Um, she created it all the way back in 2007, which is really the early days of podcasting. And it is called the Serious Astrology Podcast. And that's S-I-R-I-U-S. She lives in Oregon. She loves animals. And she loves to read. So we're obviously here to talk astrology with Dina She's going to give us a general forecast for the year ahead, and a little later on, Dina hopes to give a personal forecast to one of our listeners over Skype, and so I'm very excited about that, kind of the first time doing that. So let's get started. Welcome, Dina. Thank you, Patrick. I'm so happy to be with you. I was just telling you earlier, I love that uh, 
wonderful podcast equipment that you have on your side that makes it sound <laughs> so professional and wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I had to kind of pull out the old gear this morning and um, have my husband help me set it up <laughs> so that <laughs> so that I could be all sounding great here for you. But yes, I I have it in the closet. <laughs> well, you guys did a good job. Do I need to fill in any gaps in your bio? No, you did a great job. I was really impressed with uh, hearing about my, myself the way you did it there. <laughs> well, you really do have a beautiful website, so it was, Thank you. it was very helpful. Thank you. You have a fascinating story of how astrology and divination came into your life. Yeah. And I wonder if you could give the listeners a little background on that. Sure. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, my parents were of the generation of, you know, they were hippies in the 60s and 70s, and they were young parents. And so they were very much into what was then called the occult, you know, which is kind of a, it, it's a word that gets kind of a bad rap nowadays. Yeah, kind of um, icky. <laughs> it gets kind of an icky rap. Um, really, it just means hidden. That's the literal meaning of the word occult. And it's hidden or sacred knowledge. Uh, but we're talking about things like astrology and tarot. Uh, and my mom was into astrology and my dad was uh, into tarot. And that was my kind of what I was around growing up, probably between the ages of about four and eight. So that early exposure really got me interested in it right away. And I just couldn't get enough of, you know, looking at the cards, the tarot cards, reading about astrology, even at that age. And I was, I was kind of an early reader. You know, I'd pull books off the shelf when I was five and six, and I'd be browsing things about the sign of cancer, which I am, and, you know, really wanting to know more about it. And so that was encouraged. And then, you know, it took a, a turn a bit because my mom became a born-again Christian. And so in our household, it became forbidden for a while. And so I found this, you know, kind of a conflict within myself that I, that interest never went away for me. Mm -hmm. And I'd spent a lot of time with my dad too, and he still stayed interested and connected to uh, tarot. So I had still those influences going on and I kept it. And then my mom came back around later and, you know, was reinterested in astrology later on and she kind of came around to it. But um, I never lost the bug, you know, for astrology, tarot, all things paranormal like you. I'm a total paranerd um, yes. <laughs> and uh, love, just absorb all of that stuff. So that's my, those are my beginnings. So um, I've mentioned several times, my fascination with all of these topics really kind of happened later in life and really just no more than eight or nine years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering how a child uh, processes what astrology is, what tarot is, and all these divination things. And and do you what goes in your brain on like how it works and where it's coming from? Do you do you remember any of those thoughts? I just remember I remember a sense of wonder and fascination. Just I wanted to know more. And with tarot, for me, the pictures were intriguing. You know, for any child, I think pictures, you know, are going to be fascinating. Mm -hmm. You wonder what's going on in those pictures. What's the story that's being told? And that's really how I looked at tarot um, at that time. And astrology, I think I was fascinated with the stars and planets. Um, I, I remember looking up at the sky a lot when I was a kid. We lived in a at that time, kind of a rural part of California, uh, Northern California, Sonoma County, and it's really not rural now, but it was, you know, where you could go out and the sky was black at night. You could see the stars. And I just remember looking up and having that sense of like, what does it all mean? You know, where d did we come from the stars? What's going on? <laughs> and so it started that um, deep interest in astronomy, really, you know, I wanted to know physically about the planets and then that connected to astrology for me as well. What are some misconceptions about astrology? Mm, that's a great question. Um, there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, astrology is, is one of those fields that really has some bad PR out there. Um, and I think it comes 
due to the fact that there are, you know, there's the newspaper columns, right, that tells you what's going to happen to you today. So when people think of astrology, they often think of it in that limited form of uh, the column in the newspaper that tells you, okay, if you're a cancer, you're going to meet a guy uh, down on the corner today that's going to give you a hundred (laughs) bucks, you know. And (laughs) so it's that fortune telling uh, aspect of astrology that has given all of astrology kind of a bad name because people can say, well, I don't believe in that, you know, and, and rightly so in the sense that in sun sign astrology, which is that newspaper kind of astrology, you really don't get uh, a, a full picture. You know, we need the full birth chart to talk about what's going on with somebody. And just knowing the sun sign, you can say a few things, but they're going to be pretty general because they apply to millions of people, right? So that's one of the things that that misconception that all of astrology is that sun sign newspaper type astrology. Um, Another misconception is that it is about foretelling the future only. And some astrology, some branches of astrology focus more on that. The kind that I practice is called evolutionary astrology, and it's more to do with personal growth and spiritual growth. It's about giving you the tools to help you figure out why you're here, what your, what your destiny and your purpose is, and to help you know what tools you have to fulfill uh, the things that are meaningful to you in this life. And it's not about telling you what is going to happen to you. And I think that's really important because people get fearful when they think, oh, if I go to an astrologer, what, what if they see something bad in my chart? You know, what if they see something in my future that I don't want to know? Well, I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I won't tell you what will happen to you because I don't know. Uh, I will tell people someone what kind of what trends are coming down the road for them and how they can use that energy in flow you know move with the flow of that energy rather than fighting it and how they can best learn and grow in accordance with those things that are happening in their chart so it's it's a whole different layer you know to what most people think astrology is that aspect of personal and spiritual growth so those are just a couple of the misconceptions I can think of right off the bat. So the type of astrology that you work with, sometimes when I think of, you know, like mediumship and how I in, would interpret um, messages that are given to me, I sometimes will picture two paths ahead of me mm-hmm. and interpreting the information I'm getting and, you know, making the decision on which path to take. Can your type of astrology kind of be used in that way? Absolutely. Yeah, it's in that same vein. Um, for example, I could say, you know, in somebody's chart, they might have a career crossroads coming up and it, and I could see that, okay, there's some challenges in the career area of their chart, but there's a crossroads coming up where they will have to make a choice. And I can use the chart to more specifically advise them, you know, toward which choice would better suit their individual makeup, their strengths, and the things that they are energized by in this life. Um, So it's about having information about yourself and knowing yourself deeply. You know, that's really what astrology can help you to do. And then in knowing yourself, you can make better choices for yourself. So it's probably a loaded question, and we already had a little conversation about it before we went live, but... I've been hearing, and I think a lot of people have probably been hearing about, you know, this Mercury retrograde yes. again. And are we still in that? We are still until January 25th. And so just a little overview of Mercury retrograde. You know, that it's really common. Uh, it happens about three times a year for about three and a half weeks approximately each time. So it's, it's not something that is uncommon. Um, it happens pretty regularly. And it's, you know, important to know what sign that Mercury retrograde is happening in to get more specific information as to what it's about. And this this one is mostly in the sign of Capricorn. And so that is about slowing down and having patience, uh, taking time to figure out 
what the blocks are to you moving toward your goals. You know, this is the collective energy for all of us right now. So if it feels like, you know, here at the beginning of the year when most of us are thinking, okay, I want to get on my goals and my resolutions and spring forward into the year, it's just not happening uh, for a lot of us. <laughs> and and there's a reason. It's not happening here. <laughs> it's not happening here either. Uh, but they, see, I have the advantage of knowing that this Mercury retrograde is happening and what it's about. And so I can kind of ease up on that pressure on myself mm -hmm. and say, okay, this is going to get better in February. <laughs> um, that will be a better time to spring forward on my goals and resolutions. January, I just am thinking of it as time to continue clearing out the obstacles to moving forward on those things that I want to accomplish this year. And it feels like a little bit of a setback and we can get really impatient, frustrated about that. Or we can just say, okay, I've got to move with the cycles here instead of against them. Where does all the techie stuff, the technology kind of hiccups come from in Mercury retrograde? Great question. So Mercury is the planet that rules communication. And when it goes retrograde, what it actually means is it appears to be moving backwards from our perspective on the earth. It's not literally moving backwards, but it appears so. And the symbolism is that, you know, things to do with communication, which include, you know, technology nowadays, email, all, you know, the things that we do on the computer and, mm -hmm. um, you know, regular mail, uh, any kind of appointments you make. Skype. Uh, <laughs> Skype, <laughs> yeah, having Skype problems like someone may have, uh, that all can get can get wonky. You know, like I've had a couple cases in this Mercury retrograde of people mixing missing appointments or just like totally spacing on their appointment, uh, you know, or me getting the time wrong on something. Um, so that's that's the kind of confusion that can happen during Mercury retrograde and is pretty common. And it has to do with that Mercury rulership of communication. So, Dina, my next line of questioning has to do with, you know, the forecasts and kind of where we're leading to in the interview. But I want to get kind of a good uh, picture of your work with astrology. Is there anything we need to kind of throw in there? You're the pro. Before <laughs> we go into that. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I. It, we did a pretty good job of, of talking about it when you asked about the misconceptions. I think the only other thing I would add is that you know, people really do need to know that their free will is extremely powerful. And when I do a reading and even when I'm doing this, this forecast that we're going to do, I really am thinking about, you know, how I can advise people to use their power of choice and free will in harmony with the forces that are happening out there because there are, you know, forces that are happening out there that we have no control over. So that is the big question with astrology is like, how do we navigate the bigger forces that are happening around us all the time with the planets and the energies that are at play and having a sense of, you know, what is happening gives us the information to make the right choices for us. And I really want to empower people to think about it as, you know, a way to make better choices for their own highest good, rather than thinking of it as a uh, prediction system or a way to, you know, tell you what's going to happen to you. Because we choose what happens mm -hmm. to us to some degree, right? We don't choose everything that happens to us. And I don't believe that, but we can make better choices with more information. So that's how I, I think of astrology. So you've done a really good job of clearing up the differences between your work and a psychic reading. But I do wonder, do you have any intuitive or mediumistic abilities? You know, I think that over time you develop um, your intuition in doing this work. I think most people who do astrology readings would say that because you you refine how... Um, how your way of reading a chart goes when you sit with a person, you can pick up things, you know, and there might be certain things I know, oh, I'm supposed to say this, but not that, you know, with this person, 
or uh, I might get an image that comes to me or a story that comes to me to help that person better understand what I'm trying to communicate about the chart. So those kind of things do come through. I think we all have that, Mm -hmm. but I think it gets more developed as you do these kind of readings. And I guess if this is all um, learning to connect with the divine and and kind of a spiritual practice, to me, it makes sense that you would only get better at these abilities. True. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's it's um, the more you open up and listen to the guidance that's coming through, the more you're just going to have a natural connection with that source. <laughs> I'm wondering if you're a fan of, uh, in general, spirit communication or yeah. um, or if you, you know, like divination, if you use spirit communication tools and if you have any experience with that. My listeners would love yeah. to hear about that. <laughs> I, you know, I am, my own experiences have been that I don't hear or see things um, spirit communication wise, um, but. I get more, I get pictures, I get intuitions. Um, I can only speak to my own experiences. I have had a couple of paranormal experiences, I would call them, where I've, (laughs) now I'm just going to actually renege on what I said before, where I have heard (laughs) and seen something. uh, And I I won't go into that specific event because it was actually pretty scary. But so I know that there are things out there that I don't understand. Let's put it that way. And I am open. I'm very open-minded and curious, and I am just, I don't know what to label it. You know, the the idea of there being another side or the other side or other dimensions is absolutely plausible to me, and I work with, in my own spiritual practice, um, just prayer and connection to uh, guides, and I believe they're there. I believe I get messages from them, but it's hard for me to say absolutely what that is or if it's coming from me or a higher self or actually from another entity. I don't know. You know, I guess I'm a seeker uh, and Mm -hmm. a questioner and I uh, I have issues with people that try to label it and say, oh, it's absolutely this X, Y, Z, you know, but I'm really open and curious to what it actually is. So, uh, yeah, Ed, that, that's, those are my thoughts on that. Yeah. It's so interesting, you know, over the years, even when I was just blogging the world of the paranormal and the, the spiritual, you know, sometimes collide in a lot of areas and we're, yeah. sometimes I feel like we're lumped into paranormal yeah. and, and I guess in my brain it kind of is, but then it's weird to, you know, like talk to an astrologer, and and asking them what their thoughts are on spirit communication or if they believe in it, you know, because it's not really the same thing. <laughs> no, they're actually really different things. And probably it, you ask any different astrologer and they'll give you a very different answer because we aren't all of the same uh, mind on that topic, um, for sure. We're as individual as, as anybody else across the board, you know. So, yeah, I mean, those are my thoughts. Um and I am just, uh, I'm a para-nerd in the sense that I find it fascinating. You know, I find the area of spirit communication and, and mediumship and all of that fascinating. I'm just not sure totally what's going on there yet. And I don't know if anybody is. Right. I mean, I think <laughs> a lot of us um, would say that. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Okay. So questions from a dummy here. What is a forecast and what's this stuff about charts? Great. Okay. So forecast for me is looking at what's happening with the planets in the chart. So we're doing first a general forecast, okay, of the year ahead for, and this applies to everyone because we're all on the earth and I'm looking at what's happening in the planets in the heavens right now um, and over the next year, you know, what are the big events? But what a chart is, you know, different to that is a birth chart is cast for the moment that you were born for an individual. And it's literally a map of the sky at that moment you were born. And so that chart speaks to certain things about uh, you and your, you know, your personality, your strengths, your um, weaknesses, the things that you're inclined to do, the things that you are here 
uh, hoping, you know, to achieve a life purpose, you know, all of those things enter into the birth chart. And that chart doesn't change, right? It's correct. With yeah. You. Okay. Yeah. That's a great, great point. So yeah, that birth chart does not change, but what does change are the, the planets in the sky. They're always moving. And what I look at when I do a forecast for a person, which I'm going to do one, a short one for you and for another person is, um, you know, those planets in the sky are impacting your natal chart, right? And so we're looking at the cosmic weather as it is uh, impacting your birth chart in the forecast. So as I mentioned before, we hope to have a listener Join us in just a bit to receive a year ahead forecast from Dina, but she has offered to give me a year ahead forecast of the yes. chart. And I'm a little anxious about this, Dina. Does my year look good? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's the the thing that people often have uh, when they come to an astrology reading is a little bit of anxiety about, oh, are you going to tell me something good or bad? You know, <laughs> and I would take that fear away from you right away and say, I don't look at things in terms of good or bad because nothing is set in stone yet. You have a lot of power and a lot of free will to decide how this year goes. But what I can tell you are the points that you know, stand out for me in terms of looking at your chart, the highlights of where the energy is moving, how to work best with it, and, um, you know, can help you to have a better year once you know what's going on, right? And I'm taking notes. Oh, good, good, good. (laughs) I always encourage taking notes. Yes. All right. So let's look at that. Um, Looking at your chart, you know, first of all, the birth chart I'm just going to touch on your basic features in that chart. You've got your sun in Aries, which you probably know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Most people know their sun sign. It's in the 12th house, which is the house of spiritual connection. It's also a a very psychic placement in, in the sense that, you know, you're someone who is attuned to the energies of what we might call what's beyond the veil. So it makes sense to me totally that you're in the field that you're in and that you're drawn to this area. Um, You have your sun there and your Mercury there, Mercury planet of communication. So I would guess that you have um, a a bit of psychic ability within you that if you have not developed it yet, that you probably will be developing it further in the near future. And here's where I will start to get into the forecast a little bit with you. Uh, You have a transit, what's called a transit, the moving planet of Uranus to your sun this year. And Uranus is about surprises. It's about unexpected events. It's also about breakthroughs, kind of like new ways of thinking about and looking at things. Hmm. You've had this planet um, in connection with your Mercury over this past year. And so it would not surprise me if you've already felt some of this energy of, wow, unexpected events coming onto the scene, big insights, breakthroughs in your ways of thinking about things. And that the the Uranus connection to your sun coming up, I think this is going to be a very exciting year. I think that the uh, the challenge for you will be letting go of what feels safe and secure and comfortable to you and opening up to more change. And if you can choose in the direction of welcoming in things that even may feel a little scary, but exciting uh, in terms of opportunities, in terms of new ways of doing things, doing your work, doing your creative work, your podcast, and also your regular work, um, that you will benefit from the kind of the breath of fresh air that's coming in. And what, you know, why I say that could be a challenge uh, to your sense of security is that, you know, your moon in your chart, your birth chart is in cancer, which is a sign that craves safety and security. Um, It's about being connected to the home and family. And so you're someone who's just really oriented in life to, to want to be, you know, like, play it a little safe, (laughs) you know, there's a a sense of needing some security and that's totally okay. It's just that this year you're going to be pushed a little bit to, to go beyond, you know, where you have gone before, so to speak. All that is truth. (laughs) Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. I've seen this stuff work. I believe. 
Um, and then your rising sign also factors into that. Um, your rising sign is Taurus and you've got uh, your planet Venus in your birth chart is on the ascendant, the rising sign in Taurus. Um, so you're someone who, again, Taurus is also a sign that craves some amount of stability and security. And you are really good at being a calming influence for other people. In fact, it's probably what makes you a good teacher. Uh, I can imagine you standing, you know, in front of a classroom, like getting people to settle down. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) It's probably a big theme for you. Um, But to, for yourself, uh, you know, having a more even keel to life is more comfortable. And there isn't anything wrong with that, but that this coming year, you're going to be pushed to let go of that a little bit and it will feel a little dicey. But to know that when fears come up and when the resistance to change comes up, it's time to question, okay, am I playing it too safe? Am I getting stuck in a rut here? Am I missing out on an opportunity? And I do see opportunities coming your way in work this year. Uh, Right now, uh, you've got Jupiter, uh, the planet of growth, expansion, and opportunity in your fifth house of creativity where it has been for actually quite a while, for nearly a year. It's going to continue to be there until September. So you're in an amazingly fertile uh, creative time where you're just feeling like on fire with the things you want to do and create, okay? And go with that flow, you know, really it's a good time to push yourself a bit this year in terms of creating new things. Um, you know, how many, how many podcasts can you do? But <laughs> I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a big year for that and already has been right. Mm-hmm. Uh, this past the time that it's already been in, in that part of your chart. And uh, it will uh, then shift though in September into your sixth house, which is the house of daily work and developing your skills. And so, in September, I think there is a shift toward focusing on, okay, now what do you want to do with all of the the creative work that you've done? How do you want to take your skills to the next level? Uh, there may be some new work o- opportunities coming up for you in the fall. And again, you know, it will invite you to uh, push yourself beyond where you have gone before. So it's a year of some risk taking, you know, you're invited to take some risks and to go into new areas that, that you haven't explored. It's really exciting, uh, really, really exciting. And, you know, I, I see also uh, one other piece that can be helpful, um, the planet Neptune, which is about connection with the spiritual world, which is about our connection to what gives our life greater meaning and a sense of the transcendent. That planet is making a trine, which is a kind of a flowing and harmonious aspect to your moon this year and coming up over the next two years, really, it's going to be in contact with your moon. So you are going to feel more connected to your own psychic abilities and intuition over this next couple of years. And so if you start seeing stuff, you know, don't, don't be scared. Uh, really be willing to explore your own psychic abilities, your own intuitive abilities. Uh, there's a reason you're in the field that you are in. Uh, and, you know, it's not just about featuring other people who can do this. I think that you have some of your own skills that uh, you'll be developing coming up here over this next uh, year and two. So do you have any questions about that or anything that I didn't touch on there that you particularly wanted to know about? Well, all I can tell you is that I kind of have um, goosebumpy stuff going on (laughs) because a lot of the themes and stuff that you hit on have even probably outside of what anybody that would listen to the podcast would know or guess, but a lot of that is already begun, I guess. Yes. Yeah, you know? you're already in the middle of a lot of these things I've talked yeah, about. So yeah. I'm totally like really resonating yeah. with what you're saying. And as far as like the um, the intuitive, you know, however you worded it, that stuff. Um, yeah. You know, in the past, I've I've taken training on things and I've read lots of how to on like channeling and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, a lot of spirit communication 
topics and uh, just never felt like <laughs> never felt like I could do any of it. So I've kind of like yeah. I've slowed down on that. I don't try as much anymore. Mm-hmm. But that part makes me excited to hear that. And yeah. trust me, if something like if I start hearing and seeing things, which <laughs> if I ever have in the past, trust me, I stop and I just start straight up communicating no matter <laughs> where I'm at, you know, getting out the recorder or putting out a pad of paper. Here, talk. I'm ready. Well, I know. And, but yet, okay, so there's there's this thing that we have as humans where we really think we want to see something like that, right? We want to see a ghost. We want to mm-hmm. see... And that's a whole other thing when it actually happens. <laughs> so there's that feeling that we can have of we're a little braver than we think we are um, when it comes to actually seeing something, right? Right. And and so I would encourage you to know that, okay, some of those moments are likely coming down the road for you here over this next year and a half to two years where you're really am going to be immersed. And I, you know, I see some other things in the chart that support this that I won't go into deal detail about now, but that you are going to um, be very open, you know, to seeing what's on the other side. And if it happens, call on your Aries uh, sense of bravery and say, okay, yeah, I can, I can take this. I could do this. It's in the moment. It's going to be a different experience than thinking about it ahead of time, but knowing that it's coming can be helpful. I just, I really did. Like I said, I, I feel like that really connected to me personally. What would you say, or mm-hmm. what do you say, or do you try to convince someone who would say, well, that would, that could apply to anyone? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm absolutely that question correctly, but. Oh, it's a question that comes up a lot for me. And, and I, you know, I kind of let go of when people are very skeptical and attack astrology because I've just, I've done too many readings and seen too many, too much evidence that, you know, where people really come back to me and say, wow, that specifically related to my life. And it helped me in these number of ways in my life this year, when they come back the next year and get a reading. And I I think that what I just said about you is pretty darn specific and wouldn't apply to everyone and, you know, you, you can only know, though, I mean, you know the best about how it relates to your life. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, it's probably some regards good advice for, for more than one person. But I couldn't say that about everybody that, okay, you're going to be more psychically open this year and, and perhaps seeing some things and, uh, and the work opportunities piece as well. That's not happening for everybody. You know, it's happening mm-hmm. for you and your chart. Um, interestingly, as we get to the other chart, we'll see that she has some chart similarities to you and some similar mm. things going on. So, <laughs> but it, it, it's funny, but yeah, I mean, sometimes people can have chart connections where they have similar charts, but other than that, charts are very unique. Well, I can, I, I just, again, I want the listeners to know that that just felt really good. Like it, good. If, if I go back and th- when you, as you were talking about it, it was nothing but excitement and just kind of feeling, feeling good about it. So yeah, that, and it's cool. Who wouldn't it, want to feel that? Exactly. And, and that's what I try to do in my readings for people is to validate who you are and then to help you to see the possibilities of, of where you can go in your personal growth next. And for an Aries, you know, um, change can be exciting. It's, it's this little bit of conflict in your chart. We all have places of conflict. But, you know, I talked about all, all that stuff about safety and security, right? With the, the moon and cancer and the Taurus rising in I your chart. I have a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's probably pretty emphasized for you. Mm-hmm. But you do have the sun in Aries, which is about, you know, needing challenges, needing, uh, needing things that kind of get your blood pumping, you know, almost like wanting to be a little scared sometimes so that you can uh, fight for fight for what you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's really different energy from other pieces of your chart. So, yeah, I mean, we all have these paradoxes in the chart, as I call them, and that impels us to grow uh, those differences within us. So, Dina, tell us about the overall forecast for the year ahead for everyone. 
Yeah. So what I'm looking at for that are the movements of the planets in the sky right now and over the next year. And that affects the collective. So it is more general in the sense that you know these are the big energies at play that um, that we're interacting with. And it's not specifically predicting or, you know, telling what will happen for each person. But uh, it is like a weather report. So it's kind of like hearing what's, you know, what day is it going to be raining so I know when to bring my umbrella kind of thing. (laughs) So one of the big events this year is called the Saturn-Neptune Square. And this has to do with, um, you know, Saturn is about discipline and structure. And Neptune has to do with spiritual connection It has to do with our sense of greater meaning in the world, you know, what gives our lives a sense of greater meaning. Um, and so what I think, you know, when I see a, sa- a square happening is that there are, there's tension between these two planets, basically. And this began in November and will go all the way through to September of 2016. And it's in play through that whole period uh, we're in the middle of it right now. So what I think, you know, people are struggling with a sense of meaning, um, especially in light of world events, you know, tragic world events, uh, violence increasing, um, you know, in this country as well. Uh, but even, you know, on the broader world stage, that there's this sense of what does it all mean? I mean, that we're really having a crisis of faith here. And so what to do with that you know how we have to each find our own sense of meaning what gives our particular life uh, a sense of uh, you know connection with whether you want to call it spirit with um, your your deity of choice with you know even if you're not religious or spiritual there are ways to find meaning in your life and for example you know, let's say I care about animals. And so this year you know, I'm dedicating some time or donating some time to um, to volunteer at an animal shelter. Okay. And so that's something that that really takes it out of the abstract realm, you know, of, oh, I'm, I'm going to sit and meditate. I'm going to pray more. You know, maybe all of that is true as well. But also making a commitment, which is Saturn energy, to something that gives meaning to my life, and that's Neptune, is really important for me this year to take action on something that that connects me to a greater good. And so that's, that energy is at play. There's a little bit of sadness in it. You know, we might be feeling a little of that heaviness more, but that's inviting us to dig deeper and say, well, what do I need to do in my life that can bring it a greater sense of meaning for me? So that's a huge, a huge event that's going on. Um, I also look at where uh, Jupiter is in any year because it takes about a year to go through each sign. And so it changes signs sometime within the year. Right now, uh, Jupiter, planet of growth, expansion, and opportunity, is in the sign of Virgo. And it started into that sign uh, last fall, and it's going to be there till September 9th of 2016. So Jupiter and Virgo is inviting each of us to develop skills, uh, to take our skills to a new level. You know, we talked about some of that energy actually happening in your specific chart, Patrick. Mm -hmm. But this is happening in the collective too, this idea of doing what it takes to grow our skills in the area, you know, where we can be of service or just developing skills in something that we love to do. So, for example, in my life, um, you know, I, I've really been wanting to learn an instrument for a long time. I, I love music and I've never played an instrument. And so I chose to start taking mandolin lessons <laughs> um, in, de- in December. And it's going really well because I started, you know, when Jupiter was in Virgo and Jupiter and the moon was also in Virgo on the day that I started. So I really wanted to bring in that Virgo energy, which is about developing skills and kind of honing a craft. And so I invite people to think about like, is there a skill or a craft that you want to take to the next level? This is a great time to practice it. It's also a great time to get a teacher or mentor in that craft or skill. Um, I actually found a great 
uh, music teacher, mandolin teacher. And, you know, having a good teacher is so important, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And so those are things that people can work on. And again, you know, it links back to that idea of finding meaning. You know, what gives our lives a sense of greater meaning. Um, developing and practicing a skill can give you that sense of, okay, I'm doing something, I'm progressing, I'm growing. And so Jupiter and Virgo is really enhancing that through, through to the fall. Jupiter will then change signs uh, September 9th into Libra, which is the sign of uh, partnership and relationship. And so the, the theme of that following year, you know, the end of this year and then into 2017 will be growth and expansion in our partnerships and relationships. And there can be some great improvements that we can take advantage of, you know, the energy of improvement in our partnerships relationships, close friendships. And so I I really like that, you know, kind of softening energy, you know, at the end of the year for us. Uh, One other big thing that's going on this year is Mars retrograde. Um, Mars, you know, we, we talked about Mercury retrograde a bit and how regular that is. That happens three times during a year. But Mars retrograde happens only every two years, roughly. So it's I can a bit, only imagine that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it is interesting. Um, you know, Mars is the planet of action and you know going forward on things and and being assertive. Uh, it's the part of us, the Mars within us, is the part that does you know that takes action, that is passionate about things and ambitious and wants to move forward on them toward our desires. And so Mars is in the sign of, of Scorpio for most of that retrograde. And the retrograde happens April 17th through June 29th. And so that period of time, most of which, you know, is going to be in Scorpio, I think it's a time to hang back and reassess uh, where we are in certain relationship dynamics. It's time for doing some inner work. You know, the emphasis goes from moving forward and pushing forward on things to slowing down and hanging back. And since it's in Scorpio, which is a sign about intimacy and relationships on one level, um, I think that some relationship issues are going to come up for people around that time if you're in one. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. This can bring up some conflict in friendships as well. And that can sound, you know, a little scary or negative, but it, the opportunity of it is to look deeper and to get at the root of certain problems. Um, but if, you know, if you're averse or afraid of conflict, uh, averse to or afraid of conflict, then yeah, you might have some trouble with this transit coming up. You know, it's, it's really going to push us to confront what's going on uh, behind the scenes and underneath the surface. But the opportunity of it is we get things, you know, the things we've been sweeping under the rug can get flushed out kind of. And I think that by the fall, you know, when that Jupiter moves into Libra, the sign of relationships and partnerships, we're going to have some healing and improvement possible in those same relationships and partnerships. So those are the highlights of this year ahead for me. Some big stuff for sure. Do you see, and you may have talked about some of this and kind of hit on it, but like all, I think all one has to do is turn the TV on now and Mm -hmm. get this sense of anxiety and fear. Yeah. I guess is, is that, um, you know, represented in what's going on now in the forecast? Yeah. I mean, for me, that's, you know, part of a big cycle that is actually ending uh, that's been going on for about five years, and that has been the Uranus-Pluto square. Um, That had its last kind of close exact pass in December, which was a pretty heavy time, November, December, in terms of world events. And that, yeah, I mean, it's the fear. That's Pluto stuff. You know, we fear the unknown. We fear uh, the things that we can't control. And Uranus is about sudden or shocking events. And so we've had plenty of those. But the good news is, you know, that that energy is waning this year, that that's actually fading out. So I do see some alleviation, you know, of of that anxiety, not that 
things are going to magically get all better in the world, but that we're moving into a different kind of tone and focus. Uh, And the Saturn-Neptune square that I mentioned at the beginning is an invitation for each of us to figure out, okay, well, what, what can I do? I as an individual do to, to make my life better and to also give back some way in service. And that, that it's, that's like the only hope is each of us being able to grow and shift our own consciousness in, in a positive direction because we can't control everything that's going on out there in the world. We can mm-hmm. only control our own lives. I'm excited to hear that you finally picked up the mandolin. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> Yes, I am very excited about it. I have an awesome teacher and um, I'm doing pretty good at it. You know, I'm really enjoying it. When did you say you started? December 3rd. Okay, so you're yeah. you're going pretty quick then. I'm going pretty quick. I'm actually doing chords and everything. So Wow. <laughs> doing some new picking patterns and it's it's just really fun. It's really a joy. Very cool. Yeah. So we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be joined by hopefully a special listener. Not that that listener might not be special, but hopefully we'll be joined by a special listener. And uh, it'll be very exciting, so don't go away. You're listening to The Big Seance Podcast with Patrick Keller. Look for us on iTunes, and be sure to check out BigSeance.com for more discussion. So I'm breaking in here really quickly before we get to the really awesome astrology forecast that a listener was able to receive from Dina. I wanted to make sure and give a shout out to Harry Duran, who is the host of Podcast Junkies, a podcast with the tagline, The Podcaster's Voice. Harry featured me in episode 72 of his podcast a few weeks ago. He interviews hosts of all kinds of different podcasts, and most of them are way more successful than I am, by the way. But part of the reason why Harry interviewed me was due to me being such a super fan of his show. I have several super fans of my show, a.k.a. Major Paranerds. And I just want you to know that I know what it's like to love a podcast and look forward to each week. Well, he interviewed me, and I had no clue we'd go into some of the directions we went, but it was pretty nerdy, and I had lots of fun. I love Harry, and it was an honor to be a guest of his. If you're one of those people who are always looking for different podcasts to add to your podcast playlist, then Podcast Junkies is a really good one to check out. I'll throw a link to my interview in the show notes, or you can just go to podcastjunkies.com. No spectral edition this week, since it's a pretty long episode, but I happen to know that Tim Prossel has been digging up some good ones for future episodes, so look forward to those. Let me know what you think about this episode, will ya? It's one of those interviews where I was on a high all day afterward, because I just felt so good about it and was so, I guess, moved by how accurate and personal uh, the forecast seemed to be. I think we just may have found our big seance astrologer. Well, let's get back to it. Thanks for joining us for the big seance podcast. We'd better get back to the table while there's still some candlelight left. Welcome back to the parlor. Dina and I have now been joined by Belle, who is a listener of the podcast. We'll listen in and see what's written in the stars for her. Hi. Hi, Belle. (laughs) Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Yourself? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering to do this. I'm so glad to get to talk to you. And um, I've got your chart here. And I'm looking at the transits for the year ahead, which is, you know, what's happening in the sky as it affects your personal birth chart. And so first, just a couple words about your birth chart, which is the chart that does not change. You know, it's that map of the sky when you were born. Um, So your natal sun is in Taurus, and you probably know that. Most people know their sun sign. Mm -hmm. And yours specifically is in the 12th house, which is the house of spiritual connection, interestingly 
also the same house that Patrick has his natal son in his chart. Uh, so there's a reason you two connected. <laughs> but this is, a, you know, it's, it's a house of connection with spirit. It's a house of orientation toward spiritual matters and also like a need to connect with uh, the transcendent in some way. So hence your interest in these kinds of matters uh, that yeah. Patrick covers on his podcast. Um, your moon in your chart is in Cancer, and uh, it's the sign of a connection to home and family. And your rising sign is Gemini, which is a curious, uh, lively, intellectual sign. Your rising sign is is kind of how other people see you from the outside, but it's also how you move into the outer world. So you're drawn to experiences that enliven your mind and your curiosity. And so the intellectual life is very important to you. It's important uh, for you to be able to explore with the mind and to have a variety of experiences. So I always, you know, I touch on the sun, moon and rising sign in the chart first to just get us grounded in kind of the basics of your chart. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Absolutely. Is the rising sign also what we would call an ascendant sign? Yes, that's the okay. same. Exactly. Good, good point that that's the same thing. Um, it's just two different words for the same thing. Okay. So we call rising literally means it was rising on the horizon when you were born. If you had looked out to the east, you would have seen uh, Gemini there uh, hanging out on the on the rising sign. And ascendant just is another way to say rising. Okay. So um, looking at this year ahead for you, you know, uh, a career focus uh, really did come up for me. And that was something that, um, you know, we had emailed a bit and one area you wondered about. So it does actually show up as a spotlighted area for you this year. Okay. It, it looks like you're coming out of a time of some confusion in that area. And I say that because you've had the planet Neptune uh, on the mid heaven. Um, actually, it's actually been in your 10th house, but has now left the 10th house. And the 10th house is the house of career. The fact that uh, Neptune is kind of finally out of that house is saying, okay, things actually can be clearing up more in this coming year for you. That there's a sense of uh, things not being so foggy or murky in that area. So that can be very positive news. Um, very good news. <laughs> yeah. You may have felt that fogginess or murkiness for some time around the yes. area of career. Yes. Uh, it's, it's moving. Um, actually, it wasn't, you know, in uh, on the mid heaven so much as it was in the career part of your chart for several years. Okay. And really has finally moved on from that, not going back in there, not going back into the career sector of your chart. So that's, that's really a bonus. What is happening um, in your house of career is right now you have the planet Saturn actually helping your career house. And Saturn has to do with uh, moving toward career goals, making strides in your career, and actually kind of making your mark in the world. And mm -hmm. you're getting some support from the planet Saturn. And that has actually moved into your seventh house right now, Saturn in the seventh house. When it does that uh, kind of movement up over what's called the horizon of your chart, you're in a new career cycle that would have began about one to two months ago. And this career cycle lasts the next seven years, roughly. And it has to do with uh, something called, rather than being in an energy of struggle around career, you're moving into an energy of triumph, meaning more ability to get seen and recognized. So combining that with what I just said about Neptune, you know, moving finally out of the 10th house, it's like where you have felt rather invisible, um, now you're able to start getting seen and recognized for your work. Does that make sense and resonate with you? Yes, it does. It does. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I really do see also more opportunities coming your way this year in career. Uh, you have Jupiter the planet of opportunity and good luck and, and kind of growth and expansion into new areas is moving into your sixth house of daily work and service in all the way into November is, is when that starts. But, you know, the good news is that between now and then, 
um, you can be doing things to plan for that, you know, to, to get prepared for the opportunities that are coming down the road. Jupiter is currently in your fifth house of creativity. So it can feel like you're in a very creative time and a very fertile time in that way. And if you have any creative projects that you're trying to get off the ground, this Mm -hmm. is a great time between now and the end of November to just work like crazy, you know, a little bit. Yeah. uh, To push, you know, it's, it's not really a year to like hang back and see what happens. It's actually more of a year of action for you, of taking advantage of the creative energy that's there and wow. not letting it, you know, not letting this pass you by. Um, Jupiter then moves into the sixth house of, of daily work and service at the end of November. And so I would expect that during that window, you know, going into December and all of the next couple of years, we're talking 2017 and 18, mm-hmm. is is about a growth and expansion in the amount of opportunities that you'll be getting in your career. And then finally, um, just an overall transit, you know, that not specifically to do with career, but it's it's a major what's called midlife uh, transit. Um, it's called Uranus opposed Uranus or Uranus opposition. And that's starting to come into play for you this summer has a peak in July, but really the whole summer, it's like you get a a sneak peek into what this transit is about. And then next year it comes into play even more so, but uh, the energies are there through late spring to summer. And this is about, it's kind of, you're at that point in life where it's time to break away from what other people think you should do. And it's time to be more rebellious. It's time to claim your authenticity. And you may find that other people even put more pressure on you during this time to walk the, kind of walk the straight path, you know, like Mm -hmm. do do what what conforms and what makes them comfortable. And the message for you is no. You know, you're not going to benefit from doing that, obviously, but you may have to really push to break away from the herd thinking, so to speak. And if other people tell you you're crazy, then you're probably going in the right direction. (laughs) (laughs) That's perfect. (laughs) So, you know, it's, it, it strikes me that, I mean, there are a few similarities between your chart and Patrick's chart. So it's, it's, I call it the law of synchronicity, uh, that we get, you know, these kind of synchronistic link ups between the charts that, that I looked at, but, um, those are, you know, themes of, again, some risk taking necessary moving out of your comfort zone. You know, it, there may even be, uh, speaking of one other thing with Uranus, um, at the chance for a move, like a geographical move or a move of house this coming year. And the message would be uh, really investigate what that would mean for you. Like, would it benefit you to have a change of venue? Um, and it, it might, you know, it's, I'm not saying to move, but that it's almost like it's going to be on the table and you'll have to decide at that point if it benefits you or not. But the the thing to remember is not to conform to what other people want you to do, but to do absolutely what's right for you. And you said this starts in the summer. That one is peaking in the summer. Yeah, that's going to peak in July, but it's going all the way from late May through September. Is, is, it the possible, range. is it possible that it's already started? It's, you know, that one's not quite in range yet. Okay. But um, it really comes into play more late spring. Yeah. Okay. Because it's, yeah. it's happening now. Exactly it's already, you your life it's is already lighting it. up for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's been <laughs> getting me ready for it and it's, it's happening as we talk. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I think that what that transit will be doing then is just showing you, it's just going to bring it completely to the surface and say, mm. okay, now is the time to really decide one way or the other on that. And just keeping in mind, Uranus stuff is about, you know, being a bit rebellious and doing doing what is not expected, you know, and yeah. um, allowing yourself to be in, completely able to make big radical changes for yourself. Okay. So an, an exciting year, really, you know. I know. <laughs> so, Belle, in general, how are you? How are you processing this? What are, What do you feel about it? 
It's it's great. It's exciting because I feel that a lot of this has already been put in motion, mm-hmm. and um, it's pretty much telling same. me. Yeah, it's telling me that um, I've been getting ready for it. I got prepared for it, and this is telling me that it's perfect for you, which is what I felt it was. But it's very scary when everything changes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, um, everything's changing: career, life, move, everything, and it's it's big. It's yeah. a lot of changes. It's affecting a lot of family members. And so this is telling me that this is exactly what you wanted. You just, you just have to kind of, like you said, get into gear. And when you said to, um, there's this between the fifth house and the sixth house, mm-hmm. Jupiter is telling me that there's a time to um, be creative. Well, my, my profession is being creative. And, um, and right now I have this kind of, uh, there's this strange window of time that's been open where I can play. Still, I have this window yeah. of opportunity to play and create, and that's exactly what I was planning to do. And this is saying, do it. <laughs> Absolutely, so, they're great Absolutely. confirmations. Yeah, good. I'm so glad to hear that. So I was telling Dina that when she was giving my forecast, uh, I just had this like sense of excitement. I guess mm. that I was feeling as it was happening. Did you did you get that kind of same feeling as she was going through it all? Yeah, yeah, because it feels like good news and. You know, even though there's challenges ahead, they're they're for the greater good. You mm-hmm. know, these these are great changes, and um, I guess I've been running on faith for some time now, for a few months, and this is just what, like I mean, just being able to you know, being the one chosen to do this, it's it's a it's a really great gift, and so this is uh, I think the universe's way of telling me that you're going to be okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So, well, have you reached out to an astrologer before? Never, never. My mother seems to think she's a professional astrologer. So um, <laughs> I try not to. No, I never have before. She likes to give advice freely on that stuff. So, so yeah, no, I don't. I try not to listen to what she has to say. Too. <laughs> it's a lot different coming from your mother, I have yeah, to say. <laughs> really, I think one side. <laughs> yeah. There could be an agenda involved. You know. exactly. No yeah. offense to your mother, but most, most mothers do care something Some about with their kids. There. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But she doesn't do she doesn't do this at all. She she's aware that this is not what she does. But um, no, I've never have. So this is really this also was very exciting. Good, very cool. Well, I'm glad that we could get you on and uh, give you your forecast. Thanks for joining in our call. Excellent. Thank you so much, Patrick, and thank you, Dina. Well, thank you, Bell. So Dina DiCastro, I have enjoyed this so much. This is kind of a first for the podcast. And, you know, I very, very much appreciate my own personal forecast. And I think it was really cool to hear bells and it was good to get to know you. And I definitely want to talk to you again. Why don't you go ahead and kind of tell us where people can find you? If there's anything going on, let us know all of that. All right. Well, thank you, Patrick. It's it's really been a great time. Um, I my website is dinadecastro.com and that is D E N A D E C A S T R O dot com. And there you can find uh, information about my readings. You can also find my blog, and I have two particular blog entries that might be helpful for people in light of today's show. Uh, one is called uh, the Saturn Neptune Square. And spiritual practice. That's something that we touched on today with Saturn and Neptune square. Um, And the Mercury retrograde uh, entry that I just did, which is about this current Mercury retrograde that we're in. So those two might be helpful reading for people. Um, I also have a couple things uh, that people might be interested in. One is my mentorship programs. Um, I do one-on-one mentorship in astrology. If there's anybody out there interested in learning uh, one-on-one with a teacher mentor. Uh, I have those programs and they're under the mentorship tab. And I also have um, an ebook that I co wrote with a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Danielle Cornelius, and it's called Cycles of Wisdom. And that's on my products page. Um, it's an ebook about how to work with the lunar and solar cycles. And also, uh, she wrote, she's a a specialist in women's uh, medicine, and she wrote about working with the the women's cycle of their body and how that connects with the moon. So it's it's a really good practical guide to working with the lunar and solar cycles if you're interested in that. And you can find that on my products page. 
Cool. Well, Dina, I love the energy coming through the Skype right now. So I'll definitely yeah. be hooking up again. This has been cool. Awesome, Patrick. I really, really love your podcast and it's been a pleasure to be on. Thank you very much. And you rock. Thank you. You too. For show notes, including links to anything we may have mentioned in this episode, visit BigSeance.com, now the home of both the blog and the podcast. Just click on the Big Seance Podcast logo or find it in the menu. You can also find and subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher. Do you have any comments or feedback? Please contact me at Patrick at BigSeance.com. You can call my feedback line at 77 77- 755 tell me that's 775 775- 583-5563. You can also record audio feedback right from the site using the SpeakPipe link included in the show notes. I could decide to include your voice in a future show. Thank you so much for listening and reading. Unfortunately, it's time to blow the candles out. But we'll see you and light them again next time. I want you to know while asking that last question, I used about 15 really dramatic hand gestures. And <laughs> so if you could have seen it, it would have been probably great. Sometimes I forget that uh, people can't see me. <laughs> oh, darn it. Yeah, I would have liked to see those. <laughs> so we'll yeah. take, a, uh, take a quick break. And when we return, we'll be hopefully joined by a special, a special. <laughs> Let me start that whole sentence over again, shall we? Sure, no problem. <laughs> Your Paranerd hashtag this week, feel good astrology. All one word, hashtag feel good astrology. See ya.